move to the next topic, so evaluating model fit. Um, and uh, we have uh, two methods for evaluating model fit, the DIC and using model estimated means and variances, uh, comparison between model estimated means and variance and sample quantities. So let's look at the DIC criterion. Uh, so the DIC um, is, uh, uh, is based on th this quantity. At, um, so theta represents here the unknown, the uh, unknown quantities in the model, so the parameters. And that's basically, it's called the deviance, is the lo log likelihood of the uh, observed data, conditional on these unknown quantities. Um, this, this PD is called the estimated number of parameters, and you can find that in the M plus output. And it's essentially the average uh, deviance across the MCMC iterations minus the deviance value at the average uh, parameter estimates. And this basically quantity is, is supposed to um, approximate the number, of, uh, um, the number of parameters in the model. And then the DIC is just a simple um, combination of those two uh, values, the deviance at the average uh, parameters plus two times the number of estimated um, uh, parameters. Um, despite this kind of simple and clear definition of the DIC, this actually, um, DIC is a little tricky to use. And the reason is because, and that's, uh, actually applies also not just to DSM models, but also in, in two-level models and other models. And the reason it's uh, tricky to use is because um, it's not very clear what uh, people uh, use for theta. So what is actually considered a non-parameter uh, in, in this model? So uh, for example, in the MCMC estimation, missing values of observed variables can be considered or uh, not the um, uh, non-parameters. Uh, so th those Theta parameters can um, include uh, these missing values, or if you, depending on how you define it, they might not include the missing values. And same thing applies for latent variables. So they, the theta may or may not include latent variables. And to actually understand uh, what DIC, um, what what is the meaning of DIC, you have to understand the list, the, what, what exactly goes into this theta parameter. And the reason you have to know um, what goes into the parameter is because otherwise you cannot, you, you basically, uh, for the same model, you can actually compute two different versions of the DIC, depending on what you actually consider non-parameters, whether these latent variables. For example, the, the simplest model to consider is just a general, uh, a simple factor analysis model. So uh, uh, the factor, if the factor is considered a parameter, uh, then here you basically have the likelihood of the dependent variable condition on the factor. A different way to define the DIC is uh, to not consider the factor uh, a, a parameter, but just to use the model parameters, the loadings of the factor, just those to be included in the theta vector. And in that case, you're going to use the, in the, the uh, likelihood here, you're going to use the model implied variance covariance matrix to define the likelihood for Y. Uh, and so these are two completely different definitions. You get completely different numbers. And um, in order to be able to compare models uh, using the DIC, you have to actually use the same, uh, the same definition for the theta parameters. So the, essentially, the latent variables in the model uh, have to be the same. Um, Although uh, it, it's, there are certain exceptions, so uh, latent variables with zero variances, they have uh, double interpretation. They can either be interpreted as, uh, as a fixed parameter or as, or as a latent variable. So um, depending on, they allow you, you have this flexibility to uh, actually be able to use uh, DIC to compare models with random effects. So a two-level model um, with, uh, uh, with a random effect can be compared using DIC uh, for a model with uh, a fixed effect. So replacing a random effect with a fixed effect can be done with the DIC. Um, so here's, uh, here's a list of actually f the DSM specific. So what exactly actually goes into that theta parameter of unknown quantities? Uh, so basically, these are all the uh, random effects from the two between levels. Uh, so the random intercepts, the random slopes. And now, and those two are also for standard two-level models. And pretty much in any software that you use, 
those will be inside that theta vector. Uh, these three rows actually are specific to the DSM estimation. So initial conditions are generally considered uh, are in the theta parameter, in the theta vector, and also latent variables um, that have lagged versions uh, in the model, and also missing missing variables for um, dependent variables that are lagged in the uh, lagged ver that you use lagged versions in the model. So. So those two rows are actually, uh, they can produce a substantial amount of uh, um, missing quantities that go into, it goes into the theta vector and they uh, generally uh, cause, um, make, make the DIC uh, actually more difficult to use. So what happens is because of this, uh, these uh, known quantities are individual time specific, there are a vast amount of them. So if you have a latent variable and you have 100 uh, observations with uh, you know 100 time points uh, for each observation then you end up with 10,000 uh, latent variables on the within level that will be considered a known quantities and uh, when you actually compute the DIC what happens is that you all, all these unknown quantities have to be integrated uh, so it takes a long time for the DIC to actually converge um, so it's very common situation that uh, you know your model or will be estimated very fast. You can get, uh, you know, the model estimates to converge in a few hundred iterations, but actually to get a stable uh, DIC estimate, you might actually have to iterate uh, a long time. And I'll, I'll actually show you um, an example later on of that. Um, so this actually, um, so the reason we actually have this block, this, all these quantities here, uh, is to make the computation of the uh, deviance uh, very easy and fast. So we, you know, we iterate for each MCMC iteration, we have to compute that. And we don't really want to have this uh, be very complicated. And so that's why um, we have a longer list of um, elements uh, in the theta vector. Uh, you know, uh, Ellen has been uh, big proponent of actually trying to actually get DIC to work for more and more models and be easy to estimate. So we've, uh, I think we've uh, tried to fight back and, but you know, I think we're kind of giving up at this point. So we've actually going to, in the next version, we're probably going to try to remove these um, two roles that are actually making this uh, DIC estimation particularly difficult. Uh, so uh, it, it is possible, but essentially what it actually, uh, what we have to do is um, do a maximum likelihood estimation for each MCMC iteration, something we really try to avoid to do, because if you actually end up doing the ML within each MCMC iteration, it could actually slow things down quite a bit, but we'll, we'll give it a try, and uh, uh, if, if it works out, we'll, that might actually change for the next uh, version. Um, so, um, you know, uh, one thing to monitor when you're using the DIC is always to monitor the estimated number of parameters, the PD. Again, that is supposed to um, generally be close to the number of elements in this vector. So you, you can kind of uh, make sure by looking at the PD, uh, you can kind of make sure that uh, it matches your understanding of what the unknown quantities are. Uh, so generally, it's not going to be the precise match uh, because um, when these, some of these random effects are highly correlated, they do, if you have two random effects that are highly correlated, they, they do not count as two parameters, but they'll more count as one, almost one parameter, one and a half or something like that. So there is a reduction uh, the, in, in the Bayesian estimation. Um, a parameter doesn't, so it's an estimated number of parameters. So it's not an actual integer value. It, 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 uh, it can be reduced, and it is reduced, um, particularly when, uh, you know, random effects or the parameters are highly correlated. Uh, and again, you know, when PD is large, you have to expect that uh, uh, the convergence of the uh, DIC is going to be slow, and you need to uh, make sure that you have enough iterations to get a, a stable estimate. Uh, you know, even if you don't have a stable estimate, you, in most cases, you'll be able to use to compare models because the, dis the differences between the DICs will be large enough that, you know, you, you won't need a very precise estimation. Uh, but, um, you know, in certain cases, you, you will probably need to uh, run very long um, MCMC sequences to, to get stable estimates of the DIC. So the next uh, 
uh, method that we recommend for model fit evaluation is based on uh, comparing sample and model estimated statistics. Assuming stationarity of the autoregressive part of the descent model, uh, we can compute subject-specific model estimated means, variances, autocorrelations uh, of lag L, and those can be compared to the, the sample counterparts. Um, one caution about this is that um, uh, is this the, the, the meaning of this stationarity uh, is that um, uh, when we estimate the, the means and the variances, uh, the, we use a method that assumes stationarity of the model. Uh, so, the, excuse me, it, it assumes stationarity of the autoregressive part of the model. Uh, and um, if you have a trend in the model, then um, this uh, estimated, uh, if you have a trend in the autoregressive part of the model, the estimated means and covariances can be uh, incorrect. And I'll show you an example of that um, later. Uh, so the only uh, thing to, uh, uh, the, the thing one thing to remember is that, uh, you know, th those uh, output options that depend on the stationarity assumptions, these are the uh, uh, residual output, the tech 4 output, and the standardized estimates. And those uh, will assume uh, stationarity of the autoregressive part of the model. Uh, there's a way to deal with that. Uh, either you can uh, use uh, residual DSM style models such as the mirror model, uh, which basically uh, extracts the trend uh, uh, in the data from the autoregressive part, and that will keep the autoregressive part be stationary. Uh, and I'll, I'll give an example later on, so don't worry about this uh, this point. Uh, so once you actually have uh, model estimated quantities for each individual, you can uh, compute qu such things as, as the correlation between, so this is the model estimated mean, and this is basically the sample mean for each individual. And you can compute uh, the correlation between these uh, st statistics uh, across individuals. You can also compute the, means, uh, the mean square there. Uh, the correlation is actually ava available and it's computed for you uh, in the M plus plot utilities. The mean square there, you'll have to save these things and compute it separately. You can save this from the plot menu. Uh, I'll show you that later. Um, model estimated autocorrelations uh, are also available. Um, they're not available in the pl plot utilities, but they're available in the residual output. Um, and one, the other thing to remember here is that um, when you use sample quantities, um, that um, sample quantities are not very reliable when you have missing data. So um, the model estimated quantities can actually be accurate and the sample quantities might not match uh, the estimated quantities just because the data is not missing completely at random. But if, if the data is missing uh, at random, the sample quantities actually might be inaccurate, so um, because you have the missing missing data, um, and so in in such situations, you you have to be a little um, take these kind of uh, model fit evaluations uh, with um, just be cautious about uh, you know the missing data situations. So uh, how do we actually estimate? Uh, uh, some, uh, the model estimated means and variances uh, in, uh, uh, in time series uh, in the DSM framework. So we, there's two parts to that estimation. Um, there's the part that deals with the time series uh, portion of the model, and then there's the, the part that deals with the uh, structural part of the model. And the structural part of the model is just what you do uh, with standard structural uh, in the in same models, basically. So I, I don't have that on the slide here, but um, it's, it's the standard method. What, what happens in the time series portion of the model, uh, so I, I've just written here a simple time series equation. And if you assume stationarity, then the mean of that variable zt is also the same as the mean of uh, uh, it, the zt variable in the previous L periods. And so you can, uh, if you take the expectation of this equation, you can actually uh, solve the equation in terms of uh, um, the expected value of zt. Um, and, and this is, of course, a very simple uh, solution. Uh, it looks like that. And um, so for the variance covariance, the situation is slightly more complicated. And we use this uh, Euler Walker equations, which are basically written here. But they essentially uh, use the same approach. So 
you assume that the covariance between uh, ZT and uh, the prior version of uh, Z uh, is independent of uh, the time. It only depends on the lag between the two variables. And so if you have this kind of an invariance, um, you can use these Euler-Walker equations uh, to compute these quantities. Uh, and again, remember that this method actually um, assumes stationarity. Uh, it's it, an it's interesting thing that, uh, to note here that the Euler-Walker equations actually they date back in the 1960s, and those were actually used to, um, to actually do the model estimation. So you would actually estimate the um, sample autocorrelation matrices, and then uh, from there you would estimate, from this equation, you, would, uh, you can actually estimate the per model parameters. But uh, now we do the opposite. We get the model parameters from the MCMC estimation, and we uh, produce the model estimated um, uh, variance, covariance matrices. Uh, 